a tornado hit Davis Bessey near Toledo, Ohio in June of 1998. The funnel cloud passed between the containment building and the cooling tower, destroyed the electric grid. The emergency diesels, there were two on site. This is the backup power for the safety systems, the cooling systems to cool the reactor core, which was at full power when this tornado struck, also to cool the high level radioactive waste storage pool. The first diesel failed instantly and they couldn't bring it to life. The second diesel continued to break down for two days and they had to continue to repair it, bring it back to life. And they were in a very dicey situation because every time that second diesel failed, broke down, the core would begin to overheat. And so would the pool storing high level radioactive waste. And in fact, the grid was restored very shortly before that second diesel gave up the ghost finally and permanently and couldn't be fixed anymore. So we dodged a radioactive bullet at Davis Bessey due to a tornado. Uh, the floods you mentioned out in Nebraska last summer, uh, historic floods on the Missouri River. Fortunately, the Omaha Public Power District had the wisdom and foresight when they shut down for refueling in April of 2011, immediately after Fukushima Daiichi, so I don't know how much of a difference that made. They decided to stay shut down because they knew the floods were coming. There were historic snows the previous winter. The spring rains were of historic intensity. And sure enough, the plant was inundated. And in fact, uh, through a lucky stroke, um, the NRC had busted that company for not being prepared for floods just a year earlier, even before these historic precipitation events took place. And so the flood protections were enhanced and if they hadn't been, um, safety significant systems and structures could have been underwater and inundated. They still came within just a few feet of inundation, even with the upgrades. And during the flood, there was a fire at uh, Fort Calhoun nuclear power plant. The workers ignored smells of smoke for days, incredibly. Um, perhaps they were lax because the plant was shut down and they decided it wasn't that serious. The NRC has since determined that if the plant had been at full power when that fire took place, it could have led to a disaster because that fire threatened both sources of power at the plant for running safety systems, the grid and the emergency diesel backups. So right now that plant is still shut down since April of 2011. Um, there are various natural disasters that can, that can cause a nuclear catastrophe. There's also the potential for accidents. Uh, fire protections at plants are not enforced incredibly. We had a very close call at the uh, plant in Alabama in 1975 called Brown's Ferry. They had a raging fire at the plant that was out of control. They actually lost control over one of the reactors there and very fortunately a disaster was averted. Since 1975 when that took place, time and time again the NRC has uh, granted exemptions, allowed plants to operate despite not living up to fire protections. So that's 50% of the risk of a station blackout in the United States at a nuclear plant is due to the risk of fire. And despite that, uh, fire safety regulations are not enforced. Well, I'd just add on some of these risks that Fermi 2, just south of Detroit by 35 miles in Monroe, Michigan, Frenchtown Township, is the largest uh, Fukushima Daiichi design reactor in the world. It's a General Electric Mark I boiling water reactor. It's almost as big in size as Fukushima Daiichi units one and two put together. And its storage pool for high level radioactive waste holds more waste than units one, two, three, and four put together at Fukushima Daiichi. So these risks are very real in Michigan. It would only take a loss of the grid and the diesels at Fermi 2 to uh, plunge that atomic reactor, its high-level radioactive waste, into a catastrophe like we've seen in Japan. So we need to shut these plants down. We need to stop making high-level radioactive waste on both sides of the Great Lakes in the U.S. and in Canada.